What's going on guys? Welcome to or welcome back to the channel. This video is going to be another preventative maintenance video on my Can-Am Maverick. I plan on trying to hit all the grease fittings that I can find and grease them up. And this also gives me the chance to look at my drive shafts. Um, the drive shaft, I know the rear one has a grease fitting on there, but I'm going to be checking the U-joints and seeing if there's any play. Hopefully there's not any play, but if there is in a different video, I'm going to probably replace the whole drive shafts on them. But I have to get this. There's a skid plate on the bottom that I hope is not riveted on. If it's riveted, I'm going to hold off on that. But it looks like it's bolted on to where I can get to the, the rear drive shaft at least easier. So let me get to setting up my grease gun and we will look at all the grease fittings and check out the drive shafts. I got this grease gun off of Amazon for like 20 bucks. It feels pretty good, but we'll see. I'll put the link down in the, the description and Obviously, I will tell you if it works good or not, but I had this pulled back all the way already. Unscrew this top. We're gonna put the grease in. I'm using uh, some Mystic JT6 grease. Put that down in there. Need to pull it more. Yep. There we go. Pull it more to where that's flush. Take the cap off. This stuff is really good grease. Put this back on. We'll take our in here, we're gonna screw it in here. Now you gotta screw this on tight. Get some of this air out of it. Oh yeah. All right, let's go put it on some grease fittings. All right, so so far what I can see on the front of the unit is on your control arms, there's a grease fitting right there and there's one on the other side and on your bottom A arms you have a grease fitting right there and the other one. Uh, I'm gonna keep looking for other grease fittings as I'm doing these and then uh, we'll see from there. But for now, I'm gonna do these, go to the other driver's side and then we'll move to the back. I'm gonna take this towel and wipe these grease circs down so there, any of this dirt or mud on there doesn't get in the nozzle of the grease gun. This bottom one first. I'm just gonna put about four, three to four pumps in there, maybe six. I know that these probably haven't been done Oh, good. Uh, you can see I just pumped a little grease in there, and I don't. You can probably not see it on the camera, but you see the grease coming out of the bushing already. It's kind of what I want. Uh, just put a little bit of grease in there, where you see it coming out a little bit. I'm gonna take this piece off on both sides because I can see the front drive shaft through there, but also it'll just be easier to get this last uh, grease fitting on this upper control arm. Here at the back of the unit it has more grease fittings in the front as I've seen so far but like the front you have your upper grease fittings here's where it gets a little different your lower a arm has a angle grease cert right there for you to put grease in and then there's this bar that runs right here and there's a grease fitting for this bushing right here if you come over here 
your lower one is right here and it's a straight up grease dirt again for your lower a arm but then you follow it over here and you have a grease dirt right there so i'm gonna go ahead and time lapse me doing this back so it doesn't uh take up the whole video because we still gotta look at the drive shafts so let's get to it i want to show you this real quick the uh this bushing in here is a pain in the butt to get if you have a grease a straight you know grease gun like this but I made it work you have to hold it you have to hold it on there and you are going to get some grease spewing along the grease cert but eventually it does go into the bushing so just be aware of that uh, if you do get this grease gun right here Show you something real quick to be aware of of this cheaper grease gun so it pulled the grease dirt out of that bottom one over there uh, so luckily it did not break but the way to get you can get this out is when you put the gun together leave this a little bit loose like hand tighten it but leave it a little bit loose all you do is loosen this up in this coupler We'll let go of the uh, grease fitting. You have to loosen it to where it almost comes off. Or, well, basically, I guess you could just loosen it till it comes off. But you can get your grease fitting out. Or, if it's on the unit and gets stuck and you don't want to try to risk your grease fitting coming out or breaking off, Leave that loose and reach in there with your hands and loosen this little coupler on the end of the grease gun and it'll let go of your grease fitting. That's really only the major flaw I've seen of this cheaper grease gun. Besides it, you know, getting in tighter uh, places like I just showed you earlier is kind of hard, but I'm going to hit this grease fitting back in and uh, we'll go on to the drive shafts. Forgot to mention there is a little spring in this little coupler so when you take it off just make sure you don't lose that spring or it doesn't fall out so for the front drive shaft i went ahead and took this piece out so i could see in here uh, i put it in four wheel drive and drove forward a little bit till the grease start right here where my finger is is pointing straight up and down where i can get my grease gun on it um, this does have a little bit of play back and forth um, i didn't hear any clunks in four wheel drive or anything uh, and I know some front drive shafts usually have some play. I can't tell if it's a huge one or not, but I'm gonna keep my eye on that as I ride. And since I put the machine in full drive and put it forward, the grease cert is right on the top of that one so I can get my grease going in easily. And if I have to, I'll put it in full drive, drive forward a little bit where the grease certs are pointing straight to me. Um, so let me get to grease in the front drive shaft right now. All right, I got my grease gun attached to the U-joint on this side. I'm going to make sure that I'm getting some grease in there. All right, I see some grease. There we go. Pushing some old grease out. There we go. All right, front drive shaft is all greased up. Now, time to start the worst part, the rear drive shaft. So under the machine, there's this skid plate that goes from here to here. But there's a skid plate right there. There's multiple skid plates, but this main one right here, the rear drive shaft is right above it. And I can tell that it is bolted because if you look right there, you might can see some threads. However, some of these Mavericks have riveted skid plates, like these side skid plates are rivets. 
Now that sucks, but I don't have to take that off. So I'm gonna see what bolt this is right here and hopefully they come out. If I get this skid plate off and drop it, I'll be able to see the drive shaft hopefully and I'll be able to put any C's back on those bolts when they go through. So let's see what size socket that is. It's a 10 millimeter socket and I'm just using my ratchet wrench. Uh, this is what the, it looks like when you take it off. You got this piece and your bolt goes through it like that. Good thing I'm taking these off. Hopefully it all comes off so I can put any C's back on these. But yeah, um, I'm gonna go ahead and try to get this whole skid plate off and get covered in sand real quick or mud and caked up trash that's on the bottom of there. But that's, that's it when it comes out. So at least I know the skid plate is not riveted. Skid plate is off, but can you see the full drive shaft? Absolutely not. Huh. So up under here, about right here is where the front U joint is, but I can clearly see the uh, rear one now. So at least I can see that one. So that means I'm gonna have to go back on the top and deal with the front U joint. You know, they don't make these OG Mavericks easy to work on at all. It's one of those manufacturers where you want to figure out the engineer and strangle them. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and move this out and clean this all up so I can crawl into the machine and take a look at what we got. Up under here is, looks like the grease fitting is right there. I already moved it around and I don't feel any play. So that's a really good thing actually. I'm happy about that. I don't feel any play. Um, let's see, I'm gonna see if I can see the front and see if it has any play. Hopefully not and I will hit the grease fitting back here and the front probably has a grease fitting as well. I just gotta find it and orientate it where I need it. So I removed the plastic piece over the fuel tank um, to, to where I could see the uh, U-joint and you can see the metal skid plate right there that won't let you get it from the bottom. Technically, if you're working on the drive shaft and replacing it, you probably wanna remove the fuel tank, but hopefully I don't have to do that just to lube up the drive shaft. I already wiggled the drive shaft. I can't feel much play at all. So that's a good thing. I must have lucked out on that. So I'm going to do that grease fitting back there that I can see and then scooch the machine forward to where I can maybe see the grease fitting on the front part of this drive shaft. But yes, this is a pain just to check things and lube everything up. So thank you Can-Am for that. So let me go ahead and start doing the back and then I'll see what I can do with the front. I can't see what it's doing. So that's, I don't know if it's coming all out the other side. Let me see. I don't want to put too much grease in here, but it, does, it looks pretty dry. Oh, there we go. It's pushing the old grease out. Yep. There we go. Now she lubed up. Just got to get it off there now. Let me get my grease gun off here and let's figure out what to do with the front side of this rear input shaft. So I pulled the machine forward a little bit and uh, I don't know if you can see, but I can, the grease fitting is right in the middle right there. Let's see if I can get to focus. Right there in the middle is the grease fitting. So I should be able to Put the grease gun on there and grease that up a little bit and then button everything back up. All right, front of the rear drive shaft is lubed up. Grease gun went right on that. Um, I'm gonna button everything back up and wrap the video back up. I wanna say something. I told you I'd be honest about this grease gun. I give this grease gun a three out of 10. It is very sad because the grease gun itself is is good and it works great. It's this, this coupler that hooks on to the grease fittings that keeps getting stuck. Now this grease gun would be fine if it was fine for all these up here. But when you get to them harder ones, if it gets stuck, man, you have to sit there and try to wiggle that off and it, it's just not fun. Like I said, like I showed you earlier, that coupler, you can unscrew it and it'll 
release the fitting. You can't do that when you're down here and there's no room to work. So for a Can-Am Maverick, I probably don't recommend this. I'm still gonna put it in the description, but whew, man, that most, I think 50% of the time was me battling this grease gun, getting the, the grease gun off the fittings. So <laughs> I can't say I recommend it for this Can-Am Maverick for sure. All right, I'm putting the skid plate back on. Uh, I'm going to anti-seize all of these bolts that go back in there, so. Let's get started on that. The skid plate's not heavy at all, but I use my jack just to hold it up to where I can, I don't have to battle it trying to get screws started, so. Time to figure out the first hole here. I'm gonna start probably up here on the front. I already anti-seized the screw. I'm going to, well, I keep moving it with my head. I can't see nothing. There we go, I think that's it. Yep, there's my socket. First bolt is started. So now that that first bolt started, now the skid plate should just go on easy. So I'm gonna go ahead and do all that and pick the camera back up. Well, everything's buttoned back up on it. Uh, I'm not gonna lie, the grease gun slowed me down quite a bit when it got stuck on the, the grease fittings. So, uh, like I said, I recommend it for other things, just not this machine. It's still gonna go in the description, but that was a really slow down and the way that Can-Am just engineers stuff where you can't get it. If anyone knows a better way to get to the drive shaft other than what I did to lube it up, let me know but I can't really see another way to do it. At least now I know when I have to replace the drive shaft, what I have to take off, and it makes me better feel better that I any seized those screws so I shouldn't have any problem uh, because they did come out a little rough. So hopefully they come out easier next time. Anyways, I feel like the video is way too long already. Like I said, I try to put as much detail or me messing up in the videos, just real life experience. So if you stayed to the end, I appreciate you watching and I'll catch you in the next one.